What's up guys, welcome back to Dark Souls. So, the last time we uh, killed the Iron Golem, we conquered Sen's Fortress, aka Sen's Funhouse. And to tell you the truth, it wasn't that fun, but now we get to move on to a more fun place, and that place is on the other side of this massive mountain that's in front of us, and it looks impenetrable. It looks like there's no way to get through, the path through the mountain is blocked off. So what we get to do instead is examine this ring of light, and get treated to one of the most awesome cutscenes in the game. Now I know there's like a lot of really awesome areas in this game, but what it, what would have been so cool is if like the way through this mountain was you know some sort of like Mines of Moria level. That would have been amazing. I think there was kind of a missed opportunity here, because in both Dark Souls games there's not really a a great like inside a mountain cave sort of level. There's there's sort of one in Dark Souls 2, but not really. But anyway, just a gorgeous view here like without a doubt it looks like a huge city unfortunately we won't get to explore most of it but um all these buildings around and stuff you get to you do get to see from a distance and all these demons drop us back off at the start of an orlando so we'll be making our way to uh into that massive castle in front of us and that's where the majority of the level is going to be spent um you can always talk to this guy if you want to go back to Sen's Fortress for whatever reason. Um, but this place is like cut off from Firelink Shrine. It's cut off from all of the game that we've known and loved so far. And the only way to get back is uh, talking to that demon and traveling back to Sen's Fortress. So it is kind of unfortunate. You, um, you're you kind of on your own in An Orlando. Which, which does add to the atmosphere, I guess. The lonely atmosphere. And we get to see some of the level of like prepared for us like there's a there's a what looks like a gargoyle down there that we'll probably have to fight when we get up to him and uh, you can kinda see what you're supposed to do here you have to like go through the top of that um, church building and then like rotate that platform so I always thought that was a nice touch how you can kinda see what you're supposed to do to get through if you just like observe the level and there's a lot of like rooftops over there and stuff that I wish you can go on but unfortunately uh, there's not really a way to do that but, okay, so there's these guys called Royal Sentinels, and they are a huge pain to fight, but you can see there's a chest behind them. They're not aggressive right now, but if you try to open up that chest, they get aggressive in a hurry. Now, you can fight them, or you can not fight them, and um, later on, after we do some stuff, they will disappear. So that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm just going to wait until later, um, and then the Royal Sentinels will uh, no longer exist, and when they're gone, we'll open up that chest. So we meet our, I think, third and last firekeeper of the game here. So we'll talk to her. Well, you are a rare visitor. Welcome to the lost city of Anor Londo, chosen undead. If you seek Lord Gwyn's old key, exit here and head straight yonder. If you are the chosen one, a revelation shall visit thee. What follows thereafter depends upon you. Okay, so I guess we're going to go yonder, because that's really the only option we have at this point. Uh, before I forget, let's go ahead and reinforce our weapon. Just get it up to plus 10. It only adds 8 more damage, so it's not really that important, but... Every little bit helps, right? Alright, so... How will you have to proceed from here on? You can go that way. There's another couple chests that you can open up. But again, they're guarded by Royal Sentinels, so what we're going to do is just wait for later in the game when the Royal Sentinels will disappear and no longer exists um, and when the Royal Sentinels are just gone because I don't really want to fight them um, then you can uh, open that up for free now if you're good at dodging the Royal Sentinels aren't very hard to kill they do have pretty slow attacks and stuff and one on one they aren't that much of a pain but it's more two on one where they become uh, worse Oh, I meant to use power within there I'm going to do that and we're going to magic weapon up. And then we're going to put an end to this gargoyle's life. Now, I have had this guy kill me before. Like, uh, my most recent playthrough, actually. is funny, because I'd never died to this gargoyle before. And then my most recent playthrough. You know, you think you've played Dark Souls, like, a million times. You're probably good at it at that point. Um, but apparently not, because I died to this gargoyle the last time I came through in Orlando. So, uh, we'll see. Alright, sometimes this guy can be a big pain and like just fly around constantly and not let you hit him. 
Um, but it doesn't look like that's the case. Alright, we finished him off pretty easily. That guy can be a massive pain, so I'm really glad that he uh, wasn't that bad this time that we fought him. Alright, so we're going to come over here and there is a chest that we can grab. And it looks like you might be able to run and jump down to that like lower area. I, I don't believe it's possible to survive that jump and there is nothing down there unfortunately, so I'm not even going to try it. Um, but even for like the most skilled jumper who plays this game, I, I don't think you can make that jump and for me, definitely not. So we got some Demon Titanite from that chest, which is a uh, probably the rarest kind of Titanite. Um, it's used to upgrade like boss weapons. You can create weapons made from bosses' souls, and how you upgrade them is with Demon Titanite. We're gonna drop down here now. This is this is the way through the level. You want to go through um, this church, and this area is like pretty terrifying for anyone who has problems with heights. And we'll see why in a second here. But first, we have to kill some of these. Um, I think they're called Painted Guardians. I'm not really sure why, because they're not really painted at all. Maybe because their robes are all white, like a, a canvas painting? I'm not really not not sure at all why they're called Painted Guardians, but... So we'll uh, get the Painted Guardian sword. Not bad. Um, that weapon would be really good. It has very good damage. has very good scaling. It looks like it could be a good weapon, based on the stats, but... The problem with the Painted Guardian Sword is it's really short. It's almost like a dagger. It's such a short sword. So, in reality, it ends up being pretty terrible. Because you just have to stand, like, right up in enemies' grills to use it. Well, I mean, you can see what the sword is by what they're wielding. So, yeah, these guys are sometimes idiots and will just <laughs> jump to their death and ragdoll on the floor below. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. They're pretty dumb at times. Um, but normally you have to like fight those guys on the rafters and it is a sketch fest. So we're going to chop this chain here and that's going to drop that chandelier down. I wonder if that killed the painted guardian. It doesn't look like it did. Um, but yeah, so that painting drops down to the bottom there and uh, there is an item in that chandelier which we'll go pick up and it's a pretty awesome item. So I'm, I'm excited to get down to the floor level and pick that thing up. I'm also not excited to get down to the floor level because that means we'll have to fight a lot of these painting guardians. Oh, there we go. So as you can tell, like we're on the rafters right now, so it is probably not that difficult to fall off. Um, I have yet to ever fall off on this place. I've definitely been killed here by like the painted guardian stabs. I've never actually fallen off the rafters before, but. There is a first time for everything, so I'm like really trying to not choke right now. There we go. Um, and there's probably a way to get to that chest over there, but it looks like the only way to actually get over there is maybe doing some jumping? Yeah, I'm not really down for that right now. So um, I think we'll probably ignore that chest for now anyway um, and just get past this area. Because uh, you only have to go through the rafter section of this church once. And once you've been through it, you don't have to go through it again, which is quite the relief, let me tell you. Alright, so we're finally done with that. Um, so now we get to rotate this rotating platform. And this will uh, link up with the, um, the path from the bonfire. I'm going to buff my weapon, first of all. There is a reason for that, as we'll soon see. So what happens is, yeah, the rotating platform does as the name would imply, and it rotates, and uh, it connects the Anorlando Castle with the path from the bonfire. So now if you die, it's quite easy to get back. Also, we're going to have a friend here. Um, the gargoyle. I learned that if you just um, hang out by the lever for a little while, I'm not sure when my shield didn't block that hit, by the way, but if you just hang out by the lever for a little while, the gargoyle will always like be in a position where you can jump attack him, so it's uh, if you want some extra damage on him really quickly, that's a good thing to do. Completely whiffed there. So this gargoyle is, is uh, a bit more of a jerk than the previous one. You know, luckily these gargoyles don't respawn, so you don't have to kill them again. You only have to kill them once, but um, they, like, fly around a lot, especially this one. He flies around a lot, so... And, like, dodges attacks a lot, so he can be a pain in the neck. 
if you are a, a melee based character. If you're using like pyromancy or magic, he's not too bad, but um also you can like cut off these guys' tails, like so. And I think we should get a weapon for that. Maybe? No? Maybe you only get a weapon if you uh, kill the boss version of them in the uh, Undead Parish. That could be a thing. But we'll get the Gargoyle's Shield for killing him. Which, um, eh, it's whatever. So what we're going to do is, uh, the way to proceed on the level is actually going that boy. But we're going to go down to the bottom. Because, you know, remember that chandelier? Yeah, let's go grab that item. Because I'm pretty darn interested in uh, picking this thing up. I'm um, probably want to probably want to heal up here because there's a lot of painted guardians in this area, like a lot. They guard this broken chandelier with their lives. They do not want anyone near it at all. So luckily, fighting these guys on the ground is a lot easier than like fighting them in the rafters. They still try to like, jump up and dodge your swipes with swords a lot, and they can be kind of a pain. But they're they're really much much easier on the ground. Okay, so we aggroed three at once, which is usually a horrible, horrible thing to do. So, so we'll we'll try to get through this, I guess. Okay, one's down. Um, now we have another one coming for us. Oh dear, this this could end badly. I wouldn't be too surprised if we died here, honestly. So, like, don't be shocked if it happens. All right, no one's throwing knives, so we have a second to Estus. Okay, get some stabs in. That's not do, doing too bad for a 3v1, I would say. Yeah, look at this. Painted Guardians are overrated. You heard it. We'll pick up some throwing knives. Um, this is a key place to come back to later on in the game. Because that massive painting up there? That looks like a, a world? Well, I'm assuming that's probably the painting that these guys are guarding, but... Um, you can go into that painting. I know. Like, just, what is even life? You can travel into paintings. It makes no sense. But we'll be going there later, and it's a pretty awesome area. But uh, for now, we can't do anything with the painting yet. We have to wait. So hopefully the painting guardians won't follow me all the way out here. But I just want to like proceed on with this level. So we now have Great Magic Weapon. I picked that up. That's the spell I've been waiting to pick up for a while. So it's just a straight upgrade over the regular Magic Weapon. Adds a lot more magical damage. So it should, you know, just makes that much more powerful, I guess. But um, we can't use it yet. Have to wait um, until I get to a bonfire and then I can attune it. But... Instead of going to a bonfire right now, I'm just going to try to run through the rest of this level and get to the next bonfire. Because there's a bonfire pretty close to our location right now, but the problem with that bonfire is we have to get past the Anne Orlando archers. Um, and a lot of people really hate this section of the game. And, and I'm not like a huge fan of it, but usually I can get past the first try, so hopefully that will be the case. I don't fight any of these fools, man. I just, I run. I just make a, a complete run for it. Stop it. You want to kind of like zigzag on this part because they do shoot lightning bolts at you. So once you get past here, um, these winged demons, I thought they were my buddies the first time I played this game. I was like, what's going on? You know, they carried me over here. They're like a transport service, right? They're not enemies, but nope. Turns out, uh, not all of their kind feel the same way, so... Some of them are kind of real jerks. And there's a couple more winged demons over here that we'll just try to run past. The winged demons aren't really the bad part. It's these massive arrows. The uh, 50 cal bullets of arrows that these archers are shooting. I think they're called dragon slayer bows that these archers have. But yeah. We have to walk on a narrow walkway. If you can see that to get up to these archers and we have to get past that archer up there to our right now the problem with that is if these arrows hit you even if you block them with a shield more often than not they'll like knock you back and mess you up knock you off the ledge kill you all that sort of stuff so essentially what we have to do is just make a run for it and dodge arrows and it sounds hard and it sounds complicated it's really not that bad just kind of like that. 
Oh dear. Well, I dodged the first one. I thought I could take the second one of my shield, but apparently not. Alright, well, I'm just gonna, once again, make a run through here. And uh, I'll be ba back when I'm past the archer section, but I'll, I'll just speed up this part, but it it's pretty easy. Um, all you do is just, you know, run up to the archer, hold your shield out, he'll take some swings at you with a sword, eventually he'll fall make a mistake and fall off the edge. So you just run up to him, wait till he draws a sword, get your shield out. Pretty easy. We'll also attune the uh, great magic weapon. And there we go, we have a better magic weapon. Cool. Alright, time to take on these archers. Okay, we finally got by that joker. Man, that took a while. But he's dead, so now we finally get to uh, move on to the second bonfire. And I died a couple times to those winged demons. Uh, so, like, it only technically took, like, one additional attempt, I guess, getting to the archers. But I died a couple times to the demons who, like, stabbed me in the back and then I fell off the edge. So just, like, really unfortunate timing. But in a way, there's a new bonfire here, so we never have to deal with that part again, which is just wonderful. And also, Solaire is here, uh, which is really handy because we will be using Solaire for this area. He is a bro. Very well. You've been quiet these days. Smooth summoning, out there. Anytime you see my brilliantly shining signature, do not hesitate to call upon me. You've left me with quite an impression. I would relish a chance to assist you. Yeah, so we will be able to summon Solaire for the boss of this area, which is great. If I didn't have that. I think you have feelings for me. Oh, dear me. Pretend you didn't hear that. <laughs> yeah, so there's an interesting character. Anyway, um, there are, a, a, I guess, a couple things that we can go do. There is kind of a trick to get to the boss fight, like, really fast. So you barely have to spend any time in, in Orlando. Oh, gosh. Failing with the parries today. Alright, we finally take care of this Silver Knight. Um, they are very, very weak to parries. The only problem is you actually have to be good at parrying, which is, you know, kind of my downfall sometimes. So, I'll go open up the shortcut, because normally what you would do to uh, get to the boss really quickly is go through the shortcut that I'm about to open. However, um, what you can do, like normally you have to go through a couple rooms, fight some Silver Knights, open up some paths. It's, it's kind of a hassle all in all. Uh, but what you can do instead of that is just jump here, and I actually have to make the jump, which is easier said than done if you're not very good at it. And um, jumping is, is not my strong point in this game. Um, there we go. Alright, so you just want to jump over that ledge. Now, whether you're actually supposed to do that or not, I'm not sure. Um, because there is kind of a, a long path that you can take to get to this area that kind of seems like the path that you're supposed to take. But whatever, I typically just go this way because it's a lot faster. And then I uh, buff up my weapon, and you can kill a Silver Knight down here, and then there will be a shortcut unlocked from the bonfire. So it's always much faster to... 369 damage? Doesn't seem like uh, the Great Magic Weapon is helping much. But that's okay. And you can also kill this guy if you want to get the Silver Knight armor, and those two chests you can wear the same armor that these guys are wearing. I guess I'll, I'll get it just to show what it is. But it's it's not very good armor. I'm not really a, a big fan of it personally, so I won't be using it. But you can open up these two chests and Silver Knight gauntlets and leggings. And you can also get Silver Knight helm and Silver Knight armor. So the armor is really heavy and it doesn't provide the best defense, so I never use it personally, but it's there. But for a much better armor set, and also this door, um, you can now run through that door and that's a quick uh, shortcut to the boss, but you do have to kill a Silver Knight every single time you go through there. Now there's a much better armor set as well in the Inner Londo area that I will be grabbing. 
So another secret wall down here. I don't know like every single secret wall in the game, but I do know all the important ones. And this is another one of the important ones. And this is an armor set that I probably will use like at least once or twice in this playthrough possibly, which is the Havels set. So Havels armor I think is the heaviest armor in the game, but it also offers the best defense in the game. So it's it's really good armor, but the trade-off is it weighs a ton. Dragon Tooth, which is uh, Havel's weapon. So there's also a mimic chest here. I'll go ahead and buff up my weapon, then we'll um, you know kill the the person who lives in this chest, the mimic. The reward from this mimic chest isn't um, necessarily very useful, but I guess I'll grab it just because we're here anyway. So we might as well, right? So like all mimics, you can just kind of you know circle around them. Their attacks are super easy to dodge. Honestly, if you just keep moving, I, I don't even know if it's possible to get hit by these Mimics. They uh, don't exactly have um, amazing tracking with their swinging arms. A lot of enemies, like, their weapons will track you, which means, like, their weapons don't hit where they initially swung them at. And, like, even if you're running, they'll still hit you, even if they swung at a different location. But Mimics, not so much. Um, so probably what I'll do is I'll go, like, kindle the bonfire. Um, and what that will do is uh, give me some extra... Oh, there, there's one more room we can check out really quickly here, so why not? Another Silver Knight in here. Yet again, failing with the whole parrying thing. If I die, that's just going to be tragic. But luckily, I'm not human yet. I didn't turn human because I knew I was going to kill some Silver Knights, and I knew I'm not very good at killing these fools, so I, I figured there's probably a pretty good chance of death happening. So that's why I haven't turned human yet, but we will be turning human eventually. Yeah, I'm only doing 20 more damage um, with the great magic weapon. So either a great magic weapon is not nearly as good as I thought it was, or these guys just have ridiculously high magic defense. I'm hoping it's the latter. Um, it could be that great magic weapon is just really bad too. I don't know. Uh, so we'll grab a couple of sunlight medals there. Um, those are used to level up the Warriors of the Sun Covenant, which uh, I'm not going to do because I've done it on other characters before in the past, but I mean, that's really it for Anne Orlando, um, the second half of it anyway. There are a couple more items that you can grab, but there's really uh, nothing that's that important. Um, come to think of it, though, there is, there is one additional fellow that we can uh, help out here. Um, if we remember Siegmeier of Katarina, I do believe he is in Anne Orlando, um, so we'll go help that guy out. He's like kind of the dude with the onion hat that we saw in Sin's Fortress. And he's stuck once again, this time in Anne Orlando. So you can save him and he'll move on to the next area, so I, I kind of do want to do that and progress his storyline. So we'll have to kill a few more Silver Knights. It hasn't necessarily gone that well for me so far in fighting these guys, but hopefully we'll we'll finish these guys off. They also have a chance of dropping the Silver Knight Sword, which is a really good weapon, or their armor, which is much less good. Um, I think there's also a Silver Knight Spear. I want to say that's true. I don't actually know that for a fact, but I know some of them wield swords, some of them wield spears, so I'm just guessing that there's probably a spear involved. Uh, the Silver Knight Sword is an awesome weapon, so if I got it, I, I might even decide to use that as like a secondary weapon. So we come down here, and here's Siegmeier once again, so we can talk to him. Whatever can be done. About what, sir? Ah, you again. Let me get it. Were you repelled by the Silver Knight? Ah, oh, don't be ashamed. There's a faker vanguard like you and I. I'll think of something. We can overcome it together. That would be great. Let's do this. Is there anything else? We'll need another three, no, maybe five, hmm. quite a fix So what he's referring to, like needing extra bodies and stuff, um, he's not like some getting into necromancy or anything like weird like that. What he's actually referring to is the Silver Knights in this room. He actually uh, just needed help to take them out. Because there's three Silver Knights in this room and he's not strong enough to kill them himself. So he wants your help. I do wish he was like a little bit more direct in saying that. Just like, yo, dude, I need your help. There's a bunch of Silver Knights in this room and I can't kill them by myself. Like, if he just said that, it might be uh, easier for all parties involved. But he's not super direct. 
Anyway, if you kill all three Silver Knights in this room and talk to him again, he will move on to the next location. So this is the first time, I guess, that you actually have to, you know, help him with something. Because in a Sense Fortress, all you had to do is just talk to him. And then he moves on. There's also a chest here, and this is uh, probably, like, the most rewarding chest in all of Anorlando, so we'll go ahead and open it up. Um, it's not useful to me, but it is two Demon Titanites, which are rare, and which can come in really handy if you're using a boss weapon like um, Quaylag's weapon, which we have, actually. And I could turn this into a weapon called Quaylag's Fury Sword, which does a lot of fire damage, and it's kind of cool, but I'm not really a fan of it, personally. Thanks, bro. Alright, you got anything else for me? Nope. Okay. So he gives us the Tiny Beans Ring, which is possibly the worst ring in the game, so it's it's not a great reward. But it's something, and he'll also move on to the next location now. So there's a Silver Knight down there that we can kill. There's actually a Silver Knight in here. You know, I said I was just going to, like, go straight for the bosses, but I guess I'm, uh, just doing everything now, which is, which is fine. Oh, crap. It looked like that Silver Knight actually spotted me, the Silver Knight with the Great Bow. That guy can be a real pain. Alright, so we'll take out this fool. Now, if you climb up these spiral stairs, that's going to lead to that landing on top where we, uh, went into Sigmire's room and rescued him. Um, so it's not really important to be up there. We've already been up there. I'll take out this fool with the great bow just because, you know, get revenge on all great bow guys. There's nothing out here on this landing to grab, but you can just kill him for, I don't know, a few souls, I guess. I'm also playing in offline mode right now. Um, you know, turned off the internet, so, uh, no, that's why there's, like, no signs in the ground. There's no messages from other players on the ground or anything like that um, and also we won't be able to be invaded by other players and normally I'm not against invasions I'm not really a huge fan of PvP in Dark Souls 1 I much prefer the second game for that but still I'm not really a totally against it um, it's just that for this particular area it you get invaded really commonly and it's kind of a pain when you're trying to summon Solaire and just get to the boss which is what I'm trying to do right now um, and Invasions are very likely to happen because you do have to go human in order to summon Solaire. I'm also like really bad at um, parrying the spear dudes. Yeah, exactly. For whatever reason, the sword guys aren't that hard to parry. The spear guys are like the timing on it is just ridiculous. Um, anyway, so we lost a few souls. I'll try to pick those back up on the the way back to the boss. But we're gonna pop two humanity here, and I have tons of it because I don't. I haven't really used any humanity up to this point in the game. I used, like, uh, one, I want to say, to go human to fight Quaylag and summon um, the person there. But we're going to summon one, and that will allow us, or use one humanity to allow us to summon the Solaire. We're also going to kindle the flame, so I'll get up to ten Estus flasks instead of just uh, five. Now, I will admit, the boss for this area is a little bit tricky. Um... I wouldn't necessarily go so far to say as it's a hard boss fight, but it's tricky because you need Solaire in order to do this boss fight, or I do anyway. Um, it's possible to do it without Solaire, but Solaire does make it a lot easier, and Solaire doesn't always make it into the boss fight. So if Solaire makes it into the boss room, we have a good chance of beating this boss first try, but a lot of times what will happen is Solaire will get stuck, and he won't make it into the boss room because he'll get trapped on the outside because his AI is a little bit wonky. And uh, if that happens, typically um, I do not succeed at first try. I'll just say that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pick this up again. I got killed by this fool. I almost want to go get revenge. There is a soul item in this room. It's like 10,000 souls or something, so it's a decent amount. But I want to make sure we're full health for fighting this boss. Um, just so if Solar dies early or if things go badly... Um, we'll be able to have a good amount of Estus. 
So, uh, I'll head into the boss fight with all my buffs and 10 Estus. We have great magic weapon, we have power within available, we have everything. And Solaire Summon sh Shine, Summon Sign, my bad, uh, should be over there. Now, the only annoying thing about this part is there are these giant dudes. Um, I think they're just Royal Sentinels. These ones are actually bigger than the other Royal Sentinels, and they have, like, magic powers and stuff. So, I don't really want to mess with them. So, typically what I do is I just summon Solaire, and then I run away. And um, hope the giant dudes don't mess with me, but we'll see. I guess Ring of Steel Protection really is my second best ring at the moment. In terms of defense, like, this character has nothing going for him. Uh, I don't have a great secondary ring yet, although that will change. And I haven't... I'm still using, like, the starting armor, so... There we go. Alright, luckily this is a sword guy, which I know how to parry. It's not a spear guy, which I really struggle with in that regard. Alright, we'll take him out. So there's Solaire's sign. We can summon Solaire and then head into the boss. Now, what I'm really hoping doesn't happen is sometimes... When I said Solaire doesn't make it into the boss fog sometimes, he'll get caught up fighting these Royal Sentinels and then he'll just kind of ignore the boss room or he'll die to them, or he'll lose like almost all his HP, and then he'll come into the boss room, and he'll just get killed immediately. So, Solaire isn't great at this boss. But I am playing offline, so he's kind of the best we got right now. Alright, we'll summon him. Alright, there's Solaire. So now what we're going to do is just kind of make a run for it and hope that Solaire makes it into the boss fog. And if he doesn't, you know, I'm not going to give up. I'm still going to try to uh, fight the boss on my own, but no promises because I'm not very great at fighting this boss solo. Uh, it's definitely possible. I'm just personally not very good at it. Okay, so it looks like Solaire is making a beeline for the boss fog, so that's good. He didn't get caught up fighting those knights. So this is Ornstein and Smo, two pretty beefy bosses, lots of HP, they do lots of damage, and there's two of them at once, so this is why I like to use Solaire, because um, the first phase of the fight is the difficult part, it's when both of them are coming at you, the second phase of the fight, uh, once you kill one of them, you only have to fight one, so it's not that bad, but the first phase of the fight is the hard one. So what we want to do is have Solaire... Um, just take aggression from one of these two bosses, and whatever one he takes, we will kill the other one. Okay, it looks like uh, that one, which is Dragon Slayer Ornstein, is uh, focused on Solaire. So we're going to be killing Smo here, which is fine, because I'm a little bit more familiar with um, how to kill Smo. Alright. Get the buff up. Get this buff up. Oh, I'm going to get hit. Alright. Nope. Okay, cool. No, Solaire, get away! Get away! What are you doing? Okay, uh, I need Solaire to move. And stop attacking. Get out of here, Solaire. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll kill this guy. That's fine. I would actually prefer that Smo die rather than uh, Ornstein because I'm a little bit more familiar with how to kill Ornstein second so we're gonna go for Smo here and when he does like his charging attack I just hide behind the pillar and that's typically how you beat him okay Smo is focused on Solaire so this is not good right now because Solaire is like getting just messed up and we need him to live until Smo dies. Alright. I'm gonna drink Estus. Alright, Smo's done. So now it's time for the second phase of the fight. And now we just fight Ornstein by himself. So, the hard part's out of the way, so as long as I don't choke, Ornstein does have some attacks that are very, very damaging, but they're all also pretty easy to dodge, so... Also, Solaire's still alive, which doesn't always happen, so that's kind of cool. He might be able to get, like, a couple hits in before he dies again. And he will die again. Like, it's going to happen soon. Sooner rather than later. So, as, like, B.A. as this guy looks right now, 
how you beat him is a little bit disappointing. You beat him, like, the exact same way that you beat every other boss. You just stand in his crotch area. Oh, I got hit by the butt of his spear. I wasn't really expecting that. Yeah, you just stand in his crotch area and kind of, like, stand under him. And that's how you kill Ornstein. I'm going to try to buff up here, and hopefully I don't get hit. Nope. The buff took too long. All right. That was a bad idea. Drink up. It doesn't look like, um, in my experience so far, that, yeah, a great magic weapon really doesn't add that much damage. doesn't do a whole lot. So I'm, I'm pretty disappointed with great magic weapon so far, but um, we will be getting the uh, the next version of it, crystal magic weapon, fairly soon. So we'll just we'll wait till then until we have a really good weapon buff. Okay, so with the Ornstein fight, uh, killing Smo second is a little bit different. But as far as the Ornstein fight is concerned, the real battle here isn't really between you and Ornstein; it's between you and the camera. <laughs> Especially when he gets trapped in a corner, we'll see like how wonky the camera becomes. It's ridiculous. It just starts flipping all over the place. So that's the real battle. The boss is not Dragon Slayer Ornstein. It is the game's camera. Am I doing better damage without? I think I might actually be doing better damage without Great Magic Weapon than I was with it. Oh. Well, that kind of failed. All right, we're gonna need Estus up here to avoid death. Oh, never mind. Yeah, I I'm doing pretty terrible damage without a uh, great magic weapon, so I'm gonna need to like find a a time to buff. Or I guess I could just like go after this fight the slow way, the safe way, because I'm scared if I try to buff up my weapon again, I'm gonna get hit, because that's what happened the first time. Um. So these guys do have like some pretty ridiculously high armor. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna risk it here. Yeah. Okay, he didn't jump on me. Cool. So we got to go aggressive um, while I have the great magic weapon because I, I don't have another use of it. So as soon as this thing wears out, my damage is gonna be really bad. So I gotta be aggressive, get some hits in, get some damage in. Because otherwise, it's going to be uh, very painful and very slow to kill this fool. So honestly, the main things to watch out for is that attack that he's doing with the when his spear turns to lightning, and the one where he jumps up and slams the ground. This attack. Those are the two, in my experience, that hurt the most. I just barely got out of the way of that one. Oh man, he's spamming it now. Well, I mean, he doesn't want to get hit, and I can't really say I blame him. But if you get stabbed with the uh, the lightning spear attack, that one really hurts. Because what that one does is, like, he picks you up in the air and, like, sparks you up with lightning. It's bad, man. Okay, so... I'm out of buffs. So at this point, uh, this is just going to be a war of attrition, and it might be a long one. Um, but he is now in a corner, which means that, um, he can't really do anything to me, honestly. Uh, unless the, the camera has its way. So, yeah. I mean, it, it's like Gaping Dragon 2.0. His attacks are pretty easy to dodge. It's more just, uh, you know, staying focused. And being in for the long haul. Like, the worst possible thing that could happen right now is if, like, my weapon broke. And I hope I didn't just jinx it, but... Because I, I haven't repaired my sword in a long time, so... Um, and, yeah, like, both of these bosses, whether you kill Ornstein or Smo next, they both have really high defense. Uh, the best way to get around that is, um... The best way to, like, make this fight easy, I guess, is just use magic the same way you make any fight easy in this game it's kinda just like how you make this game easy in general is just you know be a mage alright he's he's gonna be going down pretty soon um, I really don't have much fear of losing this fight at this point and we do have a couple more Estus so if I really F up we have some uh, breathing room
Okay, he's gonna do lightning attack. Just a tiny little sliver of health left, man. He's so close to dead. That's gonna do it. Alright. There's Ornstein and Smo. First attempt done. Not too bad. And also, that he drops the Leo Ring, which we're actually going to use. And that's another reason why I like killing Ornstein second. He boosts counterattacks of thrust weapons. What that means is a thrust weapon, so a weapon that does that, basically. Um, when you have counterattack damage, which is when you attack an enemy while they're in their attack animation, like, so example, if, if Ornstein was swinging at me and while he was swinging I stabbed him, it would do extra damage, counterattack damage, and this ring increases how much, how much damage I would do. Um, but, so we got that boss fight done, which I'm really happy about, um, because what comes after that boss fight, you get an awesome, awesome unlock. And that is the ability to warp between bonfires. I can't wait, man. This is going to be so helpful. Alright, let's go ahead and talk to Guinevere, who is like the princess of Anne Orlando. Her and her uh, brother watch over the city. I am hither. Give me my stuff. Thank you. That message, by the power of the Lord Vessel, you may now warp between bonfires. That is awesome. It's so good. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, we are... Almost done with Anne Orlando. Um, we have done the first boss fight in Anne Orlando, and yes, there is a second boss fight, which is kind of interesting, but we'll get to that. So, I guess before we're done here, we will. What will we do? Level up. 25 vitality, I do want that. Get a point into endurance, or dexterity, I mean. So, we're at 25 vitality endurance, which is usually, like, that's enough to beat the game. Um. So the rest of the points I might spend on like buying some shards and upgrading my shield, maybe upgrading a second weapon. Uh, but yeah, we're done with the first boss of Anerlando, and next episode we might take out the second boss of Anerlando, or we might move on to something else. I have yet to decide, but until then, have a good one. See ya.